Good afternoon. Welcome to Debbie's Back Porch. So glad you joined us again tonight. I have here some beautiful organic apples that I found at the grocery store. Uh, and so I thought I'd make us an apple pie tonight. So I'm going to peel these and slice them fairly thinly. Uh, not big chunks, uh, but not paper thin either. I'll show you when I get done. Um, and I've already made us a crust. So I'm going to refer you to my video on basic buttery pie crust. Uh, this will be a two crust pie and we'll get started right away. Okay, well let's start with the filling. Of course we actually started with the crust and it's in the refrigerator. Uh, your crust needs to chill at least an hour. Um, overnight's okay. I made the crust last night before I went to bed. Put it in the fridge so it would be nice and chilled when I started working with it. So I just washed and peeled the apples. This was a three pound bag of organic apples. Uh, I'm not really sure what kind they are. I think they're Rome apples. Uh, you want a kind of a tart apple, something kind of firm for apple pie. And I've cut them in uh, not very uniform sized pieces, uh, but uh, not not too thick. So I've going to mix these up with three quarter cup sugar. This was what I started to say. I'm sorry. This was a three pound bag of apples. I had one apple left over, and what I do is just go ahead and cut the apples into the pie dish so that I know I have the right amount. I have, most recipes call for six cups or three pounds, and what I found works for me is just get out your pie plate, cut the apples, fill it up as much as you want. So I've got some of the apples in here. This is three quarters cup, this is three quarters cup Splenda. You can use three quarters cup sugar. Uh, and you can mix that, uh, partly white sugar, partly brown sugar, if you like. This is two teaspoons cinnamon and an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. This is a quarter teaspoon of salt. This is two tablespoons full of all-purpose flour. And this is a tablespoonful of lemon juice. Now I'm just going to mix this around. To make sure that the apples are all coated. I don't cook my apples first. I know some recipes call for you to cook the apples first. I don't. And on the sugar, by the way, you should feel free to adjust that amount of sugar. Uh, if you use sweeter apples, you can use less sugar. If you just want to use less sugar, you can use less sugar. It's not critical to the pie, it's to taste. Mix it good and make sure they're all covered or that they all have some of the flour, all the pieces have some flour and some sugar and cinnamon on them. Now while I'm mixing I'll mention I have a big bowl here of peels and cores and I'm going to give them to the chickens. Somebody's always going to say, oh, you can make apple scrap jelly out of that. Well, no, really, you shouldn't. I'll tell you why. Um, the, all the recipes, all the safe recipes for apple jelly are made from whole apple or the meat of the apple. The peel of the apple actually has a much higher pH, meaning it's much 
lower in acid and many apple peels depending on the variety and the age of the apple uh, the peel is not in the safe range for water bath canning so you don't know with the apple you have whether or not the peels are safe to make jelly out of or not and I, I've never been able to find um, a tested recipe where they have determined what would be a safe amount of lemon juice or other acid to make apple scrap jelly safe. So don't make apple scrap jelly. Give them to the chickens, put them in the trash, cook them up and eat them, refrigerate them if you want to do that. You can make refrigerated jelly. But apple scrap jelly made from uh, the peels of apples is very likely not to be safe on the shelf. Just thought I'd throw that in. This is not a canning video. Okay, I'm going to set these to the side and we're going to work on the crust. Okay, here we go. Uh, we're going to make our crust now. And um, actually, we're going to roll out our crust now. We made it last night. Uh, this is my pastry cloth. Every time I use it, somebody asks about it. Uh, it's um, there's several different brands of these. This one is a Teco. I got it on Amazon. You can get it from many different places. It's fairly heavy canvas type cloth. And this is uh, my rolling pin cover. And if you don't, and they came together. And if you bake and you don't have a pastry cloth, oh my, such a difference. Uh, much easier cleanup. Uh, much easier rolling and I haven't had one very long I got it just a while just a little while back and the difference in making pie crust is amazing I'm not a bread baker but my guess is it would be quite helpful in bread baking too so I have a little bowl of all-purpose flour over here to the side and I have my two crust, and they're refrigerated. They're kind of hard. So I split the dough into two before I refrigerated it. I'm going to have to work it just a little because it's so cold. Now, if you've watched my uh, uh, basic buttery pie crust recipe, you know that I don't work it or knead it very much uh, before it goes in the fridge. So it's not uh, totally mixed together. It's still a little rough looking. And it's going to be kind of hard to roll because it's refrigerated but a cold pie crust handles better and forms better and I work really hard to uh, not introduce heat to this until I'm actually ready to cook so you don't have to watch this whole thing I'm going to be rolling for a little while that um, I will tell you this though until you get your pie crust almost as large as you want it to be. It is a good technique to only want roll in one direction. Instead of moving your rolling pin, move your pie crust. Turn it over several times. And I'm not sure you can see, I'll move the camera so that you can see, the flakes of butter that are in this crust. I think you can see that there are flakes of butter all through the crust that when I was making it I was very careful not to heat those so that they would melt so that we will have a nice flaky pie crust.
Okay, that was my oven preheating. I have my oven preheating to 425. And my crust is just about big enough now. So I'm turning my rolling pin to get this more in the shape of a circle. I think we're good here. Yes, we're good. Okay, so I'm never good at this part, but we make it. It's all right. I'm pushing back into the pie pan just a little. Wait a minute. I'm going to have to adjust. Okay. I'm pushing back into the pie crust just a little because I don't want there to be any tension on the crust because if there's any tension on it, meaning you stretch it to make it fit, when, um, when the pie bakes, that will tighten up and pull up from the bottom. So, I want to make sure that this is not stretched at all. I'm going to move this to the side and make the top crust before I put the apples in. Okay, we have our top crust rolled out. I'm going to move it to the side. And I'm actually going to move my pastry cloth because I try to protect it from being wet. Here is our crust. And here. Are our apples. Okay, we have those mounded up kind of nice, I think. I'm going to flour my hands. And let's see if I can. Well, I think I've said I'm not very good at this part. But it's going to work just fine. I want to make sure, again, no stretching. Give it a little push back. Now, somewhere here I have my shears. We're going to cut a little skirt. Now, we don't want to cut it too short. Sorry. But we're going to trim away the excess here.
just a little bit more here where the handles are. Not all pipe lights have handles, but this one does. Speaking of pipe lights, you know a dark pipe light gives you a better crust than a light colored one. Um, clear glass. is my last choice for a pipe light because it doesn't brown your bottom crust as well. You could probably do that much quicker and much neater. And I could if I weren't trying to show it on the camera, but so next step Make a fold of the two crust all the way around. You're kind of making a roll. Trim a little bit more here. Mm. Okay, so you folded it all the way around, and I'm going to try to make a pretty crust, and you know, <laughs> I'm not always successful at making a pretty crust. We'll see how this one turns out. All you really do here is hold two fingers and one and let your two fingers Pinch your one finger. particular problem with this on apple pies because they're mounded up. Okay, then we're going to make some vent holes and you can get creative if you like. You just want to cut through the crust because you want to let the steam out. And I made my vent hole suggestive of where I think people should cut it. And then a couple right across the top. And I have here a beaten egg. The whole egg. Some people just use the white. I, I beat the whole egg. And I'm going to brush this pretty heavy because it and try to do it as evenly as I can, even though you'll never get it totally even. Uh, because it'll it'll bake differently and be more golden brown in the places where you get the egg crust. I'm, I'm sorry, where you get the pie crust. Okay, as I do this, I'll tell you now, I have my oven set on 425. This is going to bake for 45 minutes. 25 minutes in, I'm going to check uh, 
the crust and, and see whether or not my crust is getting too dark on the edges. If it is, I'll put a little protective cover over the edges, this edge right here, to keep it from burning. Um, if I put it on now, it'll mash, mash it down. So I'm going to wait and check at 25 minutes and see whether or not I need the protective cover. Okay. Okay, this is ready to go in the oven. I'm going to put it on a cookie sheet in the oven. I'm going to set my timer for 25 minutes so that I can check uh, the edge of my pie and see if it's burning. And uh, then I'll show you what we've got. We'll be back. 25 minutes in to a 45 minute cook time. And I want to make sure that the outside crust um, doesn't scorch. So I'm going to put this little guard on it. You can use aluminum foil if you want to. Um, but that'll just deflect some of the heat off the... Whoops, need to make it a little smaller. That'll just deflect some of the heat off of the uh, edge of the crust. Keep it from burning. So we'll set our timer for another 20 minutes and then I'll be back. Well, there you have it, apple pie. Pretty easy to make, tasty. When it cools off, we'll cut a slice and I'll show you the inside. Um, but I really hope that you try apple pie. Uh, it, it's really good. And if you've not tried the basic buttery pie crust yet, you really should. It works well, it's easy, uh, it, it um, has a texture that makes it easy to work with and very buttery tasting. So thank you for joining us on Debbie's Back Porch. Hope to see you again tomorrow.